Hello, my sax playing friend, Alexander Mathias here from saxophonemasterclass.com. In today's lesson, I'm gonna take you through some amazing melodic tools to help you with your improvisation on the saxophone. This is part two of my saxophone improvisation challenge. And if you missed part one of the challenge, you can actually go check that out now if you like. There's a link in the description of this video. In part one, we discussed how anybody can improvise on the saxophone, and I gave you a couple of simple melodic clusters to help you with coming up with your own melodies when you're improvising on the sax. In this lesson, we're gonna go even deeper with how you can become more melodic when you're improvising, and I'm gonna be showing you three main concepts that not only every improviser uses, but every composer uses to create beautiful melodies. Now, if you want a printable PDF guide to help you with implementing all the ideas in this lesson, go to saxophonemasterclass.com forward slash part two, and you can download that PDF right away, and that's really gonna help you with following along to this masterclass. All of these ideas today are like a melodic toolkit for you to draw from when you're improvising on the sax. And we're gonna start with rhythm. Rhythm is the most important part of improvising in any genre of music, and it truly is what gives your melody life. You can play the exact same notes, and if you change the rhythm of those notes, it can sound like a completely different melody. So let me give you an example. We're gonna take the melodic cluster one from the first part of this improvisation series, and they're the notes G, A, and C. Let me play them for you. So that's just me playing the notes evenly. I'm giving the same rhythm to each note as I go up and down those three notes. Now let's say I take that same sequence of notes going from G to A to C, then down to A to G, and I change the rhythm. So I'm gonna start by giving the same amount of rhythm to each note, and then I'm gonna change it up by making some notes shorter and some notes longer. Let me show you what I mean. So I'm playing the same notes in the same sequence, but it sounds different every time just because I'm making some notes shorter and some notes longer. Sometimes I'm making more notes shorter than there's fewer notes that are longer. I'm just experimenting with the rhythm, but I'm playing the exact same notes in the same sequence. So this is the power of rhythm when it comes to improvising on the sax. And I really want you to experiment with the same sequence of notes, but with different rhythms to see what different ideas you can come up with. Let's do another example where I'm gonna do another sequence of notes and I'm gonna change the rhythm. So here's the sequence of notes. And now I'm gonna change the rhythm. So again, the same sequence of notes, I went G, A, C, A, C, A, G, A, but then I changed the rhythm. And it sounds like a different melody almost every time. This is the power of what you can do with rhythm on the saxophone. So let me take that same sequence of notes, I'm gonna play to the backing track, and I'm going to change the rhythm as I'm playing to this backing track.
So there you have it, the same sequence of notes, G, A, C, A, C, A, G, A, played again and again, but using multiple different rhythms every time I play that sequence of notes. So I really hope you're starting to see how important rhythm is when it comes to creating melodic ideas. It's not just about the notes you play, it's about the way you play them. And it's about the rhythm that you attach to each of the notes. So try experimenting with this. Take any sequence of notes, it could be three notes, it can be four notes, or more and just experiment with changing up the rhythm as you're playing to the backing track. Now I have a backing track for alto and tenor which you can get at the end of this video. You can go ahead and fast forward to that and experiment with this now if you like. There should be chapter markings that tell you where I start the backing track for alto and baritone and where I start the backing track for tenor and soprano. But if you do want to download the backing tracks then you should join the saxophone improvisation challenge by going to saxophonemasterclass.com forward slash S I C. You're also going to get access to part one and part two of the challenge and you can download all the PDFs and the backing tracks so you can start working on your improvisation skills offline as well. So now we're going to move on to the second tool you can use to help with your improvising and that's musical phrasing. Now I was using a lot of musical phrasing in all the examples I've been giving you in part one and part two of this series, but now I'm gonna break it down for you so you can really understand what musical phrasing is. And basically musical phrasing is the equivalent of speaking a sentence. So as you may notice, as I'm speaking a sentence, I put certain pauses in to break up the sentence as well as at the end of the sentence. And this is the same for musical phrasing. When you're trying to play a musical phrase, you should think of it like you're speaking a sentence, meaning you should have pauses in between the notes that you play. So for example, if I wanted to tell you about my day, I would start by saying, I got out of bed and I made my breakfast. You could hear there was a pause in the middle of that sentence and of course at the end of that sentence. So if I wanted to translate that sentence to music, it might sound something like this. Now I'm gonna sing the notes first and then I'm gonna play them. I got out of bed and I made my breakfast. I got out of bed and I made my breakfast. Now I'm gonna play these notes on the saxophone. So that's me directly translating a sentence into a melody and then translating it to the saxophone. This is exactly what a musical phrase is. That entire melody is one complete musical phrase. So this is a really important technique when it comes to improvising on a sax. Think of it as if you're speaking words through the saxophone. Think of it as you're speaking sentences through the saxophone and you're describing your day or you're trying to tell a story. Really that's what music is all about. It's about telling a story and the way to tell a story is to speak in sentences. So this is a technique that all composers and improvisers use and I really want you to listen out for that when you're listening to your favorite sax players or listening to your favorite improvisers. And this brings me on to the third tool that you can use which is call and response. Another way of thinking of this is question and answer. The question could be, what did you do today? And the answer could be, I worked all day. So now let's turn this into a melody, a call and response, a question and an answer. I'm gonna use the melodic cluster one, which is G, A, and C as the question, and I'm gonna use the melodic cluster two as the answer. So the melody for the question is gonna be, what did you do today? I'm gonna to translate it to the saxophone using the melodic cluster of one. Let me show you. So that was the question, the call, and now we're gonna come up with the answer, the response. And the melody of that is gonna be, I worked all day. I worked all day, and that's gonna use the melodic cluster two, which is C, D, and E. Let me show you. So now we're gonna play the call and response, the question and answer, one after the other, to create a melody. Let me play them for you now. So 
So now I'm going to play the call and response, the question and answer to the backing track and you're going to hear how it creates a nice melody using these concepts. <laughs> So hopefully you can hear how this call and response, this question and answer technique can really help with creating nice melodic ideas when you're improvising. Now you can do this in so many different ways. You can use different rhythms, you can use different melody notes. You don't have to have the melodic cluster one as a question and the melodic cluster two as the answer. You can even repeat the same notes if you want as a call and response. It's really up to you and your creativity. But there you have it. There's three ideas to help you with improvising on the saxophone. You can change up the rhythm of the notes you're playing. You can think in musical phrases and sentences and you can start experimenting with call and response, question and answer techniques to help you with coming up with new melodies. So I really hope all of that was helpful. Remember you can download the guide with all of these ideas at saxophonemasterclass.com forward slash part two and it's completely free and you can start working with this material offline. If you want to get part one and part three of the saxophone improvisation challenge just go to saxophonemasterclass.com forward slash SIC and not only will you get instant access to all three parts of this challenge but I'm also going to give you the backing tracks for alto, tenor, baritone and soprano so you can work with these techniques offline as well. All right, my friend, let me know if this is helpful. Comment below this video if you have any questions and make sure to look out for part three of the saxophone improvisation challenge where I'm gonna go even deeper with how to improvise on sax using harmony and chords. So I'm gonna to explain to you what chords are and how they will help you with creating cohesive melodic ideas when you're playing individual notes on the sax. As a sax player, we don't actually play chords because chords are two or more notes that are being played at the same time and we can only play one note at a time on the saxophone. So I'm gonna to explain to you what those chord symbols mean and what notes you should be playing when you see those chord symbols. It's all in part three of the saxophone improvisation challenge so make sure to check it out. Alright my friend until next time enjoy improvising and happy playing.